In this short video, we're going to learn about spherical coordinates. In a subsequent video, we'll use spherical coordinates to evaluate triple integrals. So in spherical coordinates, our three coordinates are rho, theta, and phi. So given a point P, we're going to use the quantities rho, theta, and phi to describe the position of that point. So what is rho? Rho is the distance from the origin to the point P. It's a distance, so it's always going to be positive. So note that this is different from polar coordinates where the R coordinate can be positive or negative. In spherical coordinates, the rho value can never be negative. Phi is the angle made by, if I take a line segment from the origin to point P, the angle made with the positive z-axis is the angle phi. Now there's always two angles. You can either go one way or the other, but we're always going to go um, if we're looking in this direction, we're always going to be looking at going uh, uh, clockwise from the positive z-axis. It's the smaller of the angle. And so phi is always between 0 and pi. And it's limited between the, for those values, between 0 and pi. Now, theta is the same theta that you would get in cylindrical coordinates, or in fact, polar coordinates. If I had the x and y coordinates of point P, if I converted it to polar coordinates, that I would get the same theta value. So in fact, the way that uh, we would define it is we would project P, so in other words, go straight down onto the xy plane, get the point Q, so now I only have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Connect a line segment from the origin out to point Q. The length of that line segment is R. The angle made with the positive x-axis is theta. All right, so if I want to be able to convert from spherical coordinates to rectangular coordinates, or vice versa. How can I do that? Well, I'm going to look at two right triangles that we have in our diagram here. The first right triangle is the triangle made with the origin, points P and point Q. Now, since I go straight down, straight means making a right angle with the xy plane, I have a right angle at point Q in this triangle. And using some triangle trig and some geometry, if phi is the angle made with OP to, um, and the positive Z axis, then it's also the uh, angle up here at point P in my triangle. And so, my z value is going to be rho times cosine phi, and the r value, which is not one of my coordinates, but it's going to be an intermediate value that we'll, we will refer to when converting back and forth. My r value is rho sine phi. So that tells me how I can get z. z is, I know rho and cosine phi, I can get z with this formula right here. To get x and y, I'm going to have to look at the triangle in the xy plane. So let's take a look at that triangle carefully. We have theta here. I've got x on one leg, y on the other leg. The x and y, they form a right angle. And the hypotenuse is that quantity r, which we just said r equals rho sine 
V. So X is going to be R cosine theta, just as it is in polar coordinates, but I'm going to have to convert the R to rho sine phi. So x is rho sine phi times cosine theta. Now for y, in polar coordinates, it would be r sine theta, but we convert the r to rho sine phi, so y equals rho sine phi sine theta. What else do I know? Well, I know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared will equal rho squared. And as a reminder, rho is never negative. It's greater than or equal to 0. Theta goes from 0 to pi. So let's look at an example. Let's look at the uh, coordinate surfaces here. In other words, if I set each coordinate equal to a constant k, what kind of surface would I get? Well, the first one is, what if I have a constant value for rho? So phi can be any uh, value between 0 and pi. Theta can go from 0 to 2 pi. What would I get? Well, I would get a sphere. The center is at the origin, and the radius is the same as rho, which is k. Well, what if phi equals k? Remember, phi is the angle made with the positive z axis. Well, I would get a half cone. So imagine this line segment here would be able to continue. Rho continues in the positive direction forever and ever. And then my theta value goes from 0 to 2 pi, so this line segment here, or really it should be a ray, wraps around the, the entire uh, z-axis, and as it does that, it traces out a cone, or the upper half of a cone. And then the last one uh, is the most complicated because rho is positive. So we want rho taking on any positive value. The phi values can take on any value. So in essence that we can start from the z-axis and go away from the z-axis uh, forever. We can go up and down in any direction because phi varies from 0 to pi. But theta is fixed, the angle made with the positive x-axis. So what I get is a half plane. So it's going to have one edge on the z-axis and uh, it's going to make an angle of theta with the x-z plane. So let's uh, plot this point given in spherical coordinates and convert it to rectangular coordinates. So the way to approach plotting these points is we'd first like to know what our r value is. We're first going to draw something in the x, y plane. So remember, this is r, this is theta, and this is phi. So I have 2 times sine of pi over 6, which is going to give me 1. So that tells me that r equals 1, and I know that theta is pi over 2. So I'm going to draw a line segment of length uh, 1, that's my r value, making an angle of pi over 2 with the positive x-axis. Then what I'd like to do is find out what's my z value. In my z value, again, I'm given rho, and I know phi is going to be root 2 over, I'm mean, sorry, cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. I multiply that times 2, and I get root 3. So now to get to my point with that, those coordinates, I should just go straight up a distance of root 3. That point then, if I draw a line segment down to the origin, 
it should that line segment should have length two and should make an angle of pi over six with the positive z axis. Alternatively, I could just draw a line straight up from that point that I found in the xy plane and then draw a line which makes an angle of pi over six with the z-axis and see where those two meet. That would be the point with the given coordinates. If I want to convert it to rectangular coordinates, I can just use my formulas. Um, I could also just look at this diagram. I can see that x equals zero, y equals one. And uh, z, I said I already found z to be radical three. But let's go ahead and verify that with the formula. Sure enough, I get x equals zero, y equals one. I already know z equals radical three. And so those are my three coordinates in uh, Cartesian coordinates. All right, now I'm given a point with rectangular coordinates, one comma negative root three comma two, and I'd like to change it to spherical coordinates. Well, finding rho is fairly straightforward because rho squared is just x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And I know x, y, and z, so just substituting, I find that rho squared equals eight. So rho would be radical eight, which is two radical two. Now, from z equals rho cosine phi, I should be able to find the value of phi because I know z is 2. I just found out that rho is 2 radical 2. So cosine phi is 1 over radical 2 or radical 2 over 2. And what do I know about phi? Phi can vary from 0 to pi and cosine of phi on zero to pi is a one-to-one -one function. So in that uh, set of angles between zero and pi, the only one, the only value which has cosine of phi equal to radical two over two is phi equals pi over four. So I found phi, I've got rho. The only thing that's left is theta. And I need to do a little bit more work. So one way I could do this is to look at my r value. So r is uh, rho sine phi, which would be uh, just 2 radical 2 times sine of pi over 4. Work that out. And I find that r equals 2. And I'll just use that with x equals r cosine theta. So replacing x with the given value of 1. r I just calculated as 2. And that tells me that cosine of theta equals 1 half. But here's the difference between theta and phi. Phi can only go between 0 and pi. Theta can go, well, theta can have any value from negative infinity to positive infinity. Definitely any value between 0 and 2 pi. But remember, it could also have negative values as well. So to get more information, we're going to use the y coordinate. So y is r sine theta. Substitute the appropriate values. And I find that sine of theta is negative radical 3 over 2. So cosine is positive, sine is negative. I must be in the fourth quadrant. And so an angle whose, or a value of theta, where cosine of theta is 1 half, sine of theta is negative root 3 over 2. That would be theta equals negative pi over 3. I could have also said theta equals 5 pi over 3 and get the same values for cosine of theta and sine of theta. So we still have some options when we're talking about theta. So in spherical coordinates, then uh, the uh, point would be uh, 2 radical 2, negative pi over 3, and pi over 
four. So let's identify these surfaces. Uh, these are not coordinate surfaces. The first one is rho cosine phi equals two. But we recognize that rho cosine phi is just the equation for z. So really this is just the plane z equals two. The next one, I don't have rho times cosine phi. I have rho equal to cosine phi. Well, let's approach this the way we did with polar coordinates. I multiply both sides by rho now. So rho squared equals rho cosine phi. I can replace rho squared with x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And rho cosine phi, I can replace with z. And I can go ahead and make the right-hand side 0. I'll subtract z from each side. Let's see, I have another typo. I need z squared. x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus z equals 0. And now I can complete the square. I can go ahead and add, uh, well, half of 1 is 2. One and half squared will give me one fourth. So add one fourth to each side. Factor that out. I'll get x squared plus y squared plus, in parentheses, z minus one half quantity squared equals one fourth. And that is going to be a sphere. Its center is not going to be at the origin. It's going to be at uh, where z equals one half on the z-axis, so at the point zero comma zero comma one half, and its radius is one half. All right, another example here. We'd like to sketch this solid given some bounds on its spherical coordinates. So we're told that the radius has got to be less than two the radius, the rho value is less than 2. We're also told that rho is less than cosecant of phi, and we go all the way around the z-axis. Theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So let's break this down. This tells me I'm inside the sphere of radius 2 fact that rho is less than or equal to 2. Now if I change cosecant of phi to being 1 over sine phi, right, then, uh, and I know that phi can only go from uh, 0 to pi, and so sine of phi from 0 to pi is always positive. So I can multiply both sides by sine of phi. So rho sine of phi is less than or equal to 1. Remember, rho sine of phi is r. So that tells me that I'm inside a cylinder of radius 1 as well. So I have to be inside a sphere of radius 2, but also inside the cylinder of radius 1. And I'm going all the way around the z-axis. So here's my sphere of radius 2. Here's the cylinder of radius 1. So I want the solid, which is common to the interior of both those surfaces. And so that would give me this cylinder with this kind of little cap at the top and the bottom, which are portions of the surface of that sphere. So that would be the solid represented by that set. So we're going to stop here. I'm going to make a separate video dealing with triple integrals in spherical coordinates.